Uh, yes, I said a few things. Mr. Rafferty is obviously disappointed by the verdict. What was your reaction when you heard those three counts? It was, uh, it's always very hard to predict exactly what was in the mind of the jury. I don't think anybody in that court knew exactly what was going to happen. Are you considering an appeal, Mr. Pearson? Well, that's Mr. Rafferty's decision. Um, and, uh, was he surprised at the verdict? It's certainly one of those. It's certainly one of the verdicts that's available. I mean, if you have three choices, are you surprised by which one? Are you surprised the verdict came so quickly? Just a, essentially a full day of deliberation? Yeah, a little bit more than a full day. I don't know. Uh, there, if there were paths to conviction, that would have taken an hour. Uh, so if everything had been I think that the jury thought uh, long and hard about various different aspects about this. If they, had, if they just believed some aspects of the testimony right off the bat, they would have convicted. Are you surprised about considering the conviction on the sexual assault cause and bodily harm charge, considering their line of questioning? You know, it wasn't easy to figure what the, the jury was thinking. I mean, the Crown and us were all talking about what exactly they were thinking on those last few questions. So, yes, I suppose one might say that. Je ne sais pas. Je pense que en général, la grande possibilité, c'est qu'ils ont cru avec toutes les autres preuves, mais non seulement avec ça. S'ils l'avaient cru directement, ils auraient pu arriver à un verdict d'ici une heure. I mean, there's, there are no cases where uh, where this is not a reasonable outcome, and this was a, it was quite a strong case for Grant. You mentioned you, uh, you spoke to Mr. Rafferty and said a few things. Uh, what can you tell us about the demeanor uh, how, of his? I'm not really comfortable talking about my conversations with him. Do you think he regrets not taking the stand? Same answer. Do you think at the end of the day you were still right about him, that he was just the, the stooge who was driving the car, that he you know wasn't, uh, wasn't driving this car at all? During the course of any litigation process, the main reason, don't forget that we didn't call any evidence aside from the evidence that we called from the one person who was out in front of Oliver Stevens Public School. Uh, did I believe that that woman was telling the truth? Yes, I did. Um, that was the only evidence that we called. Nothing else is evidence. Um, the biggest uh, lesson that I want everybody to uh, consider is the fact of the, the standard of proof in jury trials and criminal cases, and uh, that's what I tried to put forward. Sure. Was this a legal aid case? Yes. How much did it cost? Yeah. Is it a hard decision for you to take cases like this? It's never easy, but uh, honestly, I mean, somebody has to take them. It's, uh, I get asked that question more often than almost anything else. How can you do a case like this? How can you defend such a person? The reality of it is that everybody in our system deserves a strong, uh, proper, and effective defense. Uh, you know, it's easy enough to say that just because it was uh, some, you know, because we empathize with the child, and who could not empathize with the child, and who could not <coughs> empathize with the family? But on the other hand, I mean, you know, Mr. Rafferty is somebody's child too. And, Somebody came here and this was their child. And any one of us would wish that uh, if this was our child uh, that was brought forward and accused of terrible things, that they would be given a fair trial uh, before anything else happened to them. It's one of our fundamental uh, things that we expect in Canada. And I mean, we live in a, in a time of upheaval worldwide, a strong and effective justice system where only the people who are properly found guilty are found guilty is uh, exactly what we need. accusés de crimes très graves, et c'est généralement ce que je fais. C'est jamais facile, et d'ailleurs, c'est jamais facile de rencontrer les gens qui, qui vraiment prennent leur rage contre l'accusé et qui le transmettent à leur avocat. Ça, c'est ce qui est possible. It's always very difficult because, I mean, we are not trained in ordinary day-to-day -day life to, you know, believe things beyond a reasonable doubt, right? I mean, we all believe that, you know, our sports team is better than anybody else in the face of all the evidence. I mean, it's the way that we all believe things. So that uh, it doesn't surprise me that there is that sort of way of behaving. I mean, it can become somewhat hard when people take the anger that they uh, that they direct against the accused because they believe that they're guilty and, frankly, transmit it over to their lawyer. I and mean, that sometimes makes it hard, but, I mean, it's part of the job. What do you think was the most damning? I hope you got a fair trial. I hope you got a fair trial. 
is going to end up for every one of our motions, but I mean, uh, I think that uh, many people within the context of us worked hard to make sure he did have a fair trial. What do you think was the most dam damning evidence that was brought forward? It's hard to tell. I mean, you know, Mr. McClintock's evidence, if believed wholeheartedly, would have convicted a man. On the other hand, they probably would have come back quicker if they had done that. It, it, there was a a lot of circumstantial evidence which uh, assisted many aspects of her testimony. So it was the evidence as a whole, I think, that was the most significant.